I've had a video written for the Orange Storm Giga for almost a year now since I got it. I have never recorded it, but it's time to throw all that away and let's just have a talk about this printer. Uh, yeah, I'm Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. As you can see, it's just kind of collecting uh, stuff on it right now because I haven't been using it in a little while. Let's jump back over to my bench where it's a little more comfortable to stand and talk about why not. Now it's no surprise that the uh, Orange Storm Giga is the biggest 3D printer I've ever used. And if you're thinking about getting one, there's probably some things you need to know. Now I've had the Orange Storm Giga for almost a year now, and it's pretty much been like a roller coaster of a machine. From now on though, I'm just gonna call it the OSG or the Giga to make it a little bit easier. Printing big is a really new experience to me, especially when I got this machine. And there are some things you really need to think about before buying a 3D printer this big. We're gonna get into that in a minute, but Let's kind of go back to the beginning where this thing all started. Now it all started when a semi truck showed up outside of the studio with a delivery. The delivery driver got it out of the back of the truck and had to cross a busy street to get to the studio. They couldn't even bring the uh, semi into like the studio parking lot because it was a full size semi. Uh, it comes in two huge boxes on a pallet. So just make sure you have the space for that kind of delivery for one and for two for these giant boxes that are gonna be showing up at your door. I was able to tip the driver and he not only helped me get the printers inside of the building with the dolly, but he actually took the pallets back, which is really awesome because I don't have a place here in the studio to keep pallets. Uh, so I really appreciate that. I'm not sure all drivers are gonna do that, but mine did and I really appreciated that. Now with these giant boxes in the entryway of the studio upstairs, I need to get them open and get them down here. Now I'm down two flights of stairs, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I gotta say it was packaged very well. Uh, there was a lot of foam and it, it was good and nothing seemed to be broken or anything like that. And again, the packaging was very good. Now I do not suggest unboxing this thing by yourself. This is a very, very heavy machine and it's just not worth hurting yourself. But you know, I was the only one here, so I had to do it. Now with that being said, I thought it was a great idea to try to get this printer down the stairs to my studio by myself. Uh, it went okay, as you can see here, but again, do not try this at home. Please just have somebody come help you. I should have just made a call and got help because I was definitely feeling the burn the next day. This is a very heavy printer. Uh, especially if you're going up or down stairs. Once I got it downstairs, it was time to assemble the printer. And uh, you know what, that was not bad at all. The instructions were not only in the manual, but there was a YouTube video that you could go watch on their channel. And as you can see here, Tristan was helping me put it together uh, in assembling it. Seeing him next to this printer really enforces how big this thing is. Uh, it is. It is massive, especially in any space you're gonna put it in but it only took me about two hours to build and it wasn't really that hard to do. Now I do suggest you have help, uh, as someone else who can help lift the parts while you're putting this thing together because you don't want to drop anything, especially that flying gantry and damage any other part of the printer or maybe that build area. And I'm looking at you, Uncle Jesse. I saw your live stream when you first got this. So uh, I didn't drop it. I got really lucky, but I did see several people drop it when they were trying to build it. So just be careful. Again, two people at least to put this thing together, to move it, to carry it, any of that stuff uh, is definitely recommended. Now we all know the size of the build area is like 800 by 800 by 1000, which is absolutely awesome. And it's absolutely massive but not absolutely for everybody. Um, there are just some things out there that you need to know about printing big that I didn't even know when I started this. One of them being is you, should, you can't just take a little file and it blow it up to like 2000% and print it. Um, I mean, you can do that, but there are a lot of things you need to think about, like how thick are the walls gonna be when you're done? Uh, how big are the overhangs gonna be? If there's moving parts, are they actually gonna work? Uh, you know, with the tolerances when you blow them up that big, it is much better to take a model, blow it up in some sort of uh, CAD software and then export it at the size you want to do other than taking a file and just, just making it huge. You know, I, I could talk about that for a long time. It's just something to think about. Not everything I tried to build worked because I didn't understand that I couldn't just, you know, blow something up huge and just print it. Uh, so 
just food for thought, I guess. I do need to talk about the strength of the machine really quick because it's super strong. I could literally probably do pull-ups on this thing with no problem, but take the time when you're assembling this thing, check every single screw. I found a ton of screws from the factory that were not tight, they were just loose. So uh, I tightened everything up, but make sure you do the same. I found so many loose screws. Uh, it just, you know, early model quality control wasn't absolutely awesome. And, you know, just, just take the time to do it. It'll be better in the long run if you do. So let's talk about a couple things uh, about the printer. We know it has a 10 inch touch screen. Um, it's okay, it works. Uh, it is connected to the bottom right of the machine in the front, and I don't like that. It needs to have a 90 degree turn up or, or, or you know, like basically a 90 degree connector in there because too many times it's so easy to just almost kick it or knock it out or it, it just needs that 90 degree thing in there. Um, the buttons, everything's down at the bottom of the printer. And from all the other videos, you probably know that already but I would rather see that at the top. They ran cables for everything else, so why not put that stuff at the top, put the connector for the screen, put the power button, that kind of thing. The USB card slot could go up there too. It'd be super easy to do. Uh, you ran all the other wires, so just at the top of the machine would be better. I don't think they're gonna fix it at this point, but just some gripes that I had. We know it's a Core XY machine, and that's great. It prints, it does a pretty decent job at printing. I would say when it prints, it's actually not a bad printer. Um, in the beginning, when we, when we got the first ones though, it had some issues. They have since sent some upgrades, uh, a different hot end, uh, upgraded um, memory, I believe, for the board, uh, a different um, spool holder, like mount kind of thing, stuff like that. But uh, I, I would say it's better now than it was when we first got it. Uh, I hope they're doing that stuff from the factory. But, um, you know, it is, kind of is what it is. It's not a bad printer at all. And we're gonna show, we're gonna talk about prints in a second here. But if you're printing like little things, like I, I think this Buddha was the very first thing that I ever printed. It came on the uh, SD card, I believe. It didn't come out bad. It actually came out pretty good. Um, not bad at all. Um, so that was cool. I printed like a normal size Benchy. Remember this has a 0.06 nozzle uh, on it. It's going to be a little bit more chunky layers than you're probably used to with the 0.4, but overall, eh. Now after the first couple prints went okay, they were little though. I thought I would try to scale up to something bigger and that just didn't work out good. Uh, this was the first thing. It was, it's a vase mode Dalek. Um, Dalek? Dalek? Correct me in the comments. I know you will. Uh, you know, everything just, it didn't, la it didn't stick. It, the whole section here didn't even print. Just was overall not a great experience. So I thought, why not a vase? And this vase actually did succeed. And if you remember right, I put a, I had a short where my little man was actually inside of this. The thing is, when I took it off the printer, the bottom fell off immediately and it was just like an open bottom vase. I was able to play with it briefly with, with Tristan. Uh, and like put them in it and like, ta-da, kind of like a magic trick. But, uh, you know, my first two big prints just just weren't great. <laughs> weren't great, even though they were vase mode, this didn't do great. That leads me to the next thing I tried to print, which was, uh, it was a fix some dude Tie Fighter. Um, sorry, Tie Defender. Just fix some dude Tie Defender. And it shifted and failed like not too far into it. I don't know if you can see the shift in here. It's not easy to see, but I had to stop it. Um, and, and each one of these fails, you gotta remember that this is a big printer and it takes a ton of filament to run these printers. So each one of these fails wasn't just like, oh, it failed. This was a lot of filament. Um, so that was the first attempt. Then I tried it again. Uh, it got farther this time. You can see it's it's thicker than this one is. Um, I think this was only like a few hours from being done and totally shifted again. And you can see it um, maybe like right here, the top of the, the circle, everything just shifted. Um, it was printing good and I gotta say, I, I leveled it okay. I didn't really talk about the bed leveling on this. 
Um, they have an automated bed leveling and it, it, it's okay, it does good. And then there's a manual leveling that is tedious and frustrating, but I highly suggest you do it because it's much better after that. Uh, but you know, the first layers, they're actually not bad at all. Um, but another fail, so that, that was not my favorite. Um, so far, there's a lot of fails going on here. Then, I tried again. So, I loaded up another three kilogram roll of Polymaker, and I got it. Finally. It's really hard to see. There we go. It, it succeeded this time. Um, it took three times to get it this far, but it did succeed. It's all here. I love the look. I never put it together because I really love the look of this. Now, I had this printed. Uh, I think Un Uncle Jesse showed something like this originally, too. I had this printed before um, he did, and then he just he, he released his video first, which is fine with me because I love these things. Uh, Fix Em Dude does an awesome job on these cards. But this is an example of just taking something and exploding it uh, much bigger. And I'm, I, you know, I don't know if this would actually fit together very well if I put it together. But I love how it looks, like like art on the wall, you know, kind of thing. And this thing came out pretty good. There was, you know, some gaps in the top layer, stuff like that. But overall, this was my first big success, and I was pretty pumped about that. Real quick, I need to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. With a robust and user-friendly website, you can jump on and finish or even start any one of your projects using PCBWay today. Whether it's custom PCBs, CNC milling, or even 3D printing, they've got you covered. If you're looking for metal 3D prints, SLS, or anything real crazy like that, they can do that too. Check out the link in the description below to look at PCBWay's offerings and get your project done today. Now back to it. I was so excited about it that I decided to shift my focus to something even bigger, a Benchy. That's right, a, a giant Benchy. Um, and if you guys followed the channel a, a year ago, you found out probably that it failed. Um, <laughs> this is a lot of filament to fail, and it was like, wow, every time, right? Um, I'm, I'm using Polymaker three kilogram rolls because that makes sense on a giant printer like this. Otherwise, you're swapping rolls quite a bit. Um, but this here was like like two and a half kilograms. Um, you can see there's, I mean, not a ton of infill, but it just, it failed, and I was like, Dang it. <laughs> I was pretty sad about that. Um, but you know what? You got to try again because I needed this to work. So I did. And that's when we got this one. Now this one obviously succeeded. This is a, a enormous Benchy. Um, it did pretty well. Uh, it wasn't perfect. And I do have some video of it printing and, and doing the strings and stuff like that. I'll try to slap that in there. Um, you can see some of the strings hanging down like right here. And in the front where that bridging is, you know, pretty big. Uh, inside a little bit too. But overall, this was awesome. This, this succeeded. It's huge, as you can see here. And if, and if we put it next to uh, uh, like a regular sized Benchy, um, that just kind of barely sits like that. So that tells you how big this Benchy is. This was a lot of filament though. Um, this Benchy here is almost four kilograms of filament. Um, it, it was a lot of filament. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was about four, almost four kilograms, but I'm so excited that it didn't fail. And that is pretty much where it stopped working. So I just got back and I'm on my cell phone, but uh, this thing is printing in thin air because it ran out of filament and I guess that means the filament run out sensor is not working. <laughs> it's not lit up. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I guess we're starting over. Dang it. And that brings us to something you need to think about. Big printers equal big fails. Um, be prepared to buy a ton of filament. And, and be prepared to try and try again. Now, I do have to say, I didn't go great. Now, I did get some really cool stuff. I was, I was doing some testing with 3D Print Bunny, and I got some uh, stringing tests that went 800 millimeters long. 
It is absolutely crazy to show. Actually, I can show, give me one second. Okay, so what I have here are some different tests I was doing with her because she designed a huge stringing project for this printer. And um, we did some tests. You can see the strings there, kind of contrast with my shirt. And they got, they got really long. Now these have been around for almost a year, so some of the strings have broken. I didn't reprint them. But this was with the original extruder and it didn't do that bad. Now, uh, that was that one. And then I said, hey, let's go bigger. And then we went with, oh, let's see what's gonna, now, now these both broke, which stinks because these were the best ones. But I think I had some footage that I'll put in uh, that shows that they succeeded. But it, I went with this one next. It's really hard to see that string on this one. Maybe I should show the white one. But the longest string on this one was 800 millimeters. We did it diagonally. I put it on and you can kind of see, let's see. I put it on there and you can kind of see if I pull it tight, that's how big it was. This actually succeeded. Again, I, I'll show some footage of it that I have. Um, I was super blown away. Uh, and then I started trying some other small tests. It just, it, it didn't, it wasn't doing great. It started doing really bad layers. Uh, so like I said, then it, then it started going bad, the bad extrusions, bad layers. I re-leveled a couple times. It just wasn't great. Um, that's when Elegu sent a couple of the upgrade parts that they did like a few months later. Um, and, and since then it was actually better. I started printing some stuff on here again and it was better. Um, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a very niche thing. If you don't need a printer this big, don't get one. Uh, it takes up so much space. Like I can't even imagine putting this in a living room or something or using it as your dining room table like like Ben uh, it, It's Boy in Space did. But it did get a successful print um, again after. I can't believe what just happened. I literally just dropped this and broke it on the way over here. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> uh, this was a successful print. As you can see, I just dropped it and broke it. Um, but th this was a vase mode print almost complete almost the full size of the printer. It's super hard to get it all in frame, but I dropped it and I broke it now, so that sucks. But it was a success. It printed good, it looks really good, and um, you know, now I can't show it because it's broken. Dang it. But that kind of sums up this printer a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a bad printer. It's, it's beefy, it's big, it's bulky, it takes up a ton of space. But when it prints, it actually prints pretty good. Now that I got the upgraded parts. So I'm not sure what the future holds for the Elegoo uh, Orange Storm Giga here in my studio. I'm, I'm, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. There's so many things you need to think about before getting a machine like this. Space, what are you gonna use it for? Can you afford the filament that it's gonna take? Um, can I mean do you want to mess with it when it doesn't go great because it's really not a set it and forget it deal I don't think there's been a firmware update in nine months or something I don't even know because I keep asking them and they keep telling me it's it's up to date but it really needs some help um that way too so it is what it is it's not a it's not a crazy printer I, I love that I have it but I don't love using it <laughs> I, I need to find some projects, I think. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should keep it and, and if there's some projects you would like to see on it. Uh, I think it does have a place. I'm just not sure what that place is. Um, I don't do a lot of videos like this, but I'm just, you know, honestly, it is, um, yeah, it kind of is what it is. <laughs> so let me know in the comments. Uh, if you think I should keep this thing, um, what do you think I should print on it or, or I, what do you want to see on it? It's such a weird position for me because I just don't know what I should do with the thing. But um, yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So let me know. Do you have one? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you ever used it? Is it sitting in the box still? Um, all that kind of stuff. And if you haven't seen this video right here, definitely go check that one out.